tangled up. Good morning. Good morning. morning. I'm going to have a sip of water before I begin. I'm Chris Miller. Uh, I'm retired as of last July, so newly retired. Uh, this past July, uh, I was the uh, senior pastor at the United Methodist Church at Abseekin uh, before I retired and had several other appointments throughout my 26 years of ministry. And I'm so happy to be here with you this morning to, to share in your worship and your time together. Our text this morning from Genesis takes us back to the very beginning, the very beginning. What would become Earth? was without form and was void. When void is used as a noun, our dictionary tells us that it means a completely empty space. And it has the synonyms of vacuum and emptiness and nothingness and words like that. And so what we have in the beginning is only God and a formless emptiness. This is the baseline of creation, the very beginning of the beginning. And yet, in this formless emptiness, we are told that things are changing, things are becoming. There is a deep, waters covered in darkness, and yet there was no light. This is an impenetrable darkness, darkness in which nothing can be seen. We are told that the wind from God swept over the face of these waters. I'm sure you've all heard at some point in your life that the word for wind in Greek can be translated into spirit and breath as well. So the same word that uh, is one word in Greek is three words in English, either spirit, wind, or breath. Our text can be read then, a wind from God swept over the face of the waters, or a breath from God swept over the face of the waters, or the spirit from God swept over the face of the waters. However you choose to read this, know that this wind or breath or spirit of God is God's creative generative power, changing the very essence of the formless void that would become the earth upon which we live, the universe which we experience. It all began with waters of change and the wind from God, a spirit of God, a breath of God that swept over these waters of change. This is the baseline of God's intention for the creation of the world, the creation of what is, what will be, and what always has been. In our gospel lesson this morning, we have come to the baptism of Jesus by John the Baptizer. According to the church calendar, today is the first Sunday after the Epiphany of our Lord. Epiphany is always on the 6th of January. Uh, last Sunday, uh, some churches chose to celebrate that as Epiphany Sunday. Uh, this Sunday is set aside as the Baptism of the Lord Sunday on the church calendar, if you follow those, and not all churches do. Three days ago, like I said, was Epiphany itself. And it's the day that we uh, celebrate Jesus being revealed to the Gentiles through the arrival of the three kings, the Magi. But today we celebrate the revelation of Jesus as God's own son, which occurs during his baptism. If you look carefully, you will see some of the same elements that we saw in our lesson from Genesis. Water is present. The spirit of God is present. And in fact, all three persons of the Trinity are present, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. It, it, is this a creation story in and of itself? Well, maybe not in the way that you and I normally think of creation stories, but if you think of creation as a story about beginnings, if you think of creation as a story about change, if you think of creation as a story about resetting things to the way God has always intended them to be, then yes, this is a creation story. It is in the waters of change that we see the beginning of a new thing from God. It is in the waters of change that we glimpse the mysterious connection of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. It is in the waters of change that we have the image of Jesus reset from being the son of Joseph, son of Eli, to what he had always been, the son of the living God. 
It is in the waters of change that we see that Jesus is now going to move out into his public ministry. It is with these waters of change that we see new beginnings. But this is not a, a new beginning in the sense that what is is now something that never was. This is a new beginning that takes what is and makes it what God has always intended it to be. This is a recreation, a resetting. Finally, we move to our lesson from Acts this morning. By the way, don't get like too excited about that word, finally. Anyway, finally, we, we move to our lesson from Acts this morning. In this lesson, we, along with Paul, come into contact with disciples. They had been baptized with John's baptism, a baptism of repentance, a baptism that recognizes the sin of an individual, a baptism that recognizes our separation from God through sin. This is this is a baptism that recognizes that we have become something other than what God intended us to be at our creation. A baptism that calls us back into relationship with God, a baptism that looks forward to our being reset. And yet, John's baptism was a baptism that didn't provide the power of God. A baptism with the element of water, but not the element of wind the breath, the spirit of God. Remember in our gospel lesson how John tells the people he baptizes only with water, but the one who is coming will baptize you with the Holy Spirit, the holy wind, the holy breath of God. Paul explains the problem and then baptizes them in the name of Jesus. Paul lays his hands upon them and the Holy Spirit, the, the breath of God, the wind of God, fills them and they are changed. They are reset. But they have not changed into something that they never were. They are changed, they are reset into what God had always intended them to be. With all the elements present, they began to speak in tongues and they began to prophesy. It is clear in other places in our scripture that speaking in tongues and prophecy are not given to all as a gift of the Holy Spirit. But in, in our text today, this gift becomes a clear sign that change had taken place in the lives of those who were baptized with the waters of change and the power of the Holy Spirit. Here's the thing. All of these scripture lessons this morning contain similar key elements. And we could spend weeks talking about different parts of these stories as they relate to one another. But today I want to talk about the element of change, the element of being reset to that which God has always known that you were. In our text from Genesis, the formless void was transformed, was changed into what would become the beginning of creation as God intended it to be. It was not the earth as we know it now. It was not broken, but becoming. Without this intentional act of God breathing on the waters, God's spirit activating the waters of change, nothing would exist at all. In our text from Luke, we see Jesus intentionally get into the waters of change, the waters of baptism, through the water and the spirit, Jesus begins to change what he had been doing. He begins to change how the world would see him. He identifies with what he has always been, the Son of God. He moves into public ministry. He starts a movement that can never be stopped. The voice from heaven calls down from heaven and says, You are my Son, the Beloved, with you. I am well pleased. Jesus had not even started his ministry yet. But the father looks at the son as he has always seen him, his child, his beloved, one with whom he is well pleased, one who brings him joy. And in our lesson from Acts, we see these same elements of water and spirit change and reset the lives of those who were baptized. They begin to speak God's words in languages which they had not been taught. They begin to move out into ministry. 
they begin to recognize themselves for what they had always been, children of God, God's beloved, those with whom God is well pleased, those who give God joy, bring joy into the heart of God. In the Gospel of John, chapter 1, verse 12 and 13, we hear these words. All who believed in Jesus' name, God gave the right to become children of God, children born not of blood nor of the desire of human will, but born of God. When you receive Jesus into your heart, you are starting a new beginning, but not a beginning that never was. It is a resetting of your soul to what God had always intended you to be, how God has always looked at you, God's child, God's beloved, one in whom God is well pleased, one who brings joy into the heart of God. This is how God sees you. And this resetting of your soul does not mark the end of your journey, but the beginning of your journey as part of God's ministry to the world. Remember at the end of Jesus' baptism, we hear the words, Jesus was about 30 years old when he began his work, when he began his work. This is what I want you to hear this morning. These events were beginnings, not finishing places. The act of creation did not stop with the first evening and morning, the first day. God continued, and I believe continues, to create. When Jesus was baptized, he didn't stop and say, it is finished. No, that line comes some three years later when he lived into his baptism, when he moved out into ministry when he did all that was necessary for the forgiveness of sins, when he gave himself up on the cross, only then did he cry out, it is finished. But the baptism with the waters of change was only the beginning of Jesus' public ministry. When those in our story from Acts were baptized into Jesus with the waters of change and the Spirit of God, it too was only a beginning. As we read on in Acts, we see that the church grew, we see that other disciples are made, we see that the Gentile believers are integrated into the body of Christ. These waters of change in the Spirit of God and the lives of the disciples in the text, uh, in today's text, was just a beginning, a resetting of the soul to be what God has always intended them to be, to be how God had always seen them. What about our baptism? Should they be any different than what we're reading about today? Should our bapti should not, shouldn't our baptisms be a resetting of our souls as well? Aren't our baptisms where we are reset to what we have always been in God's eyes, to how God has always seen us, children of God, beloved of God, blessed by God, loved by God? God has always known us as his children. God has always thought of us as beloved. God has always sought to bless us. God has always loved us. And we bring joy to God. The change, the resetting, is us recognizing what God has always known about us, what God has always intended for us. Have we misunderstood baptism as an ending point instead of the starting line of our life in God? Baptism is a beginning, the introduction to a book waiting to be written. Beginnings by themselves lack meaning, so our baptisms wait for their fulfillment. We are handed a map, but we must take the trip. It takes our whole life to finish our baptisms. All our days are commentary on our baptisms. Repentance, conversion, and growth are a lifelong process. Just as Jesus' life gave meaning to his baptism, so our baptisms wait to be given meaning to each of our lives as they are reset 
by God. If you have been baptized through the waters of change in the name of Jesus and with the power of the Holy Spirit, then you are ready to fulfill the beginnings to which God has called you. If you have not been baptized, then don't wait any longer. Come and see your pastor and, and talk to her about how you might be baptized with the waters of change and the power of the Holy Spirit. I want to close with these words that I read recently. Now you can start to get excited. I want to close with these words that I read recently. They come from Howard Thurman, an activist and theologian. It is a poem called The Work of Christmas. When the song of the angels is still, when the star in the sky is gone, when the kings and princes are home, when the shepherds are back with their flock, the work of Christmas begins to find the lost, to heal the broken, to feed the hungry, to release the prisoner, to rebuild the nation to bring peace among others, to make music in the heart. Amen. Changing the chords. I want to thank Pastor Chris for his message today. Many of you don't know, and hopefully now that he's retired, he doesn't remember. <laughs> But Pastor Chris once sat on the decom board at church, and that was the church when I answered my call into ministry. I had to come before. I remember. <laughs> for them. So if there are any complaints, you can all see Pastor Chris after church. It was my fault. I, I love it. <laughs> or if you want to say thank you, you can also see him after church. If you would all stand now, if you were able, as we sing our final hymn, Standing on the Promises, the correct verse is not, or the correct, correct hymn number is 374 in your books. Standing on the Promises, number 374. <laughs> Thank you.